Hi everybody, welcome to Game On. My name is Justin. I'm Matt. This is a show all about tabletop gaming from RPGs to board games and everything in between. And guess what? I wrote that all by myself. Always, you always want the credit for it. I want the credit for everything. He did it. It's all his fault. It's not an AI. I hate to break it to you, but I haven't done one of these videos in like a year and a half. It's all been AI on my hand. No. AI. We're talking about AI and the applications for the gaming world. And this was in part inspired by a little experiment our man Justin did just mm -hmm. earlier today. Mm -hmm. And I was not ordered by our robot overlords to do the it. Benevolent robot overlords. So this is what I did. Take care asked, of us all. I asked chat GPT to one, write me a D D like adventure. Okay. Two, write me a D D uh, a, for fifth edition combat encounter for tenth level players. It's very that, specific. Yep, yeah, uh, and make it a hard difficulty. Mm. Uh, and then I said, write me a, a Twilight 2000 uh, scenario. Combat scenario? Yeah. No, not combat, just in just, general. Just an encounter. Okay. Yeah. And then in the last one was uh, specifically Cyberpunk Red Scream Sheets. Okay. And the results, Doctor? Just fine. They all... They, it all looked good with the, the quick perusal. Mm -hmm. uh, I have gone... I have thought to myself, if I was ever in a rush and I needed something to do the heavy lifting for me, if I needed something to think for me... Hmm. I can use chat GPT. I haven't loaded up here. That's why I pointed <laughs> behind me. <laughs> yes, if we were to pan the camera, you would see his jumbo computer screen has one of those up on it. Um, so he, here's my thought. Okay. Here's one of several thoughts. Okay. Um, it passes muster on... You, you skimmed it, you read through it. It seems like it's a perfectly serviceable example of each of the the challenges you set forth for the uh, the robot overlords yes um was any of the four better or worse than another or did they all seem to produce about the same quality of yeah results? it was a bit all okay so if we're we're stipulating that each of the the results was good enough on its very first try Right? You didn't refine anything, you didn't dial it in, you didn't do anything to this to make it better. You just one shot, one go, and see what it puts out. Yep. Okay. Okay. Now, so what... How do you feel about what you've created, Dr. Frankenstein? Oh, I didn't create anything. It created it for me. You pushed go. I pushed the buttons. Yeah. I am excited by it, and also, well, you, before we did any of this, we had a long conversation about this. <laughs> just, I'm gonna give away the, uh, the, uh, the backstory of this. Um, it's just, it, personally, I both am happy about it, because I think it is a good tool. It seems like one, at least. But I also am afraid of what it will do for the future of gaming, writing, illustrating, yes, game mastering. Well, and I think what you we're encountering here is sort of the second iteration of a moral quandary that first came into the gaming world in the context of artwork, right? Yeah. Because people were using AI you know, mid-journey or whatever, generated art um, for gaming-related projects. And then there was a backlash to that, and, you know, artists, digital artists or real-world artists, not that digital art isn't real, but tangible media artists 
um, you know, kind of pushed back against the usage of free artwork, right? Mm -hmm. Make the make the machines do the heavy lifting and then get, reap the benefits, publish that stuff. You don't have any copyright issues. You don't have any any uh, labor issues. You don't have any delay, Yeah. right? Digital artwork is almost instantaneous. And so, yeah, it really confronted artists with a thing that happened to, I would say, digital photographers. 20 years ago, which is technology made much of the skill obsolete, right? Now everybody's got a super duper resolution camera on their cell phone. Mm -hmm. Very few people can make a living as a professional photographer anymore. I would say a fraction, a single dig digit percentage of what used to be a relatively stable industry yeah. is left because of technology marches on makes it accessible and doable for almost anybody to take pretty good photos and and you know much of many of our audience out there probably does this on a semi-regular basis and there's all kinds of crazy tools and you know filters and all this kind of stuff where you can basically modify photos on the fly mm -hmm. and make them into pro almost professional grade with almost no effort. Yeah. So, okay, putting that aside, then there was AI-generated art, mm -hmm. which was creating photo, in some cases, photorealistic images, in some cases, very creative, fanciful, not photo-based images of things that never existed. Yes. Right? Um, because the computer can simulate, emulate, replicate, so backlash, hey, we're gonna lose our livelihood as artists if mm -hmm. you guys do this. So some of the gaming companies made a pledge to no, not use AI generated artwork. Mm -hmm. Others kind of shrugged their shoulders and said, hey, time marches on, right? Yeah. So now here we are in the, this sort of third generation of computer generated creative content. Yeah. The actual text. Mm-hmm. Right? AIs, AIs have gotten sophisticated enough that they can simulate or emulate um, prose proficiently enough that it's at least as good as what some human beings could generate. And given the nature of computers, it's probably growing at an exponential rate. It's not going to be long before it can generate text that is indistinguishable yeah. from humans generated. And when that's the case, where is the compelling argument to not use it, right? Like you said, for, for a, a, an end user, not somebody in the industry trying to make a living at it, but somebody who's just trying to take a shortcut to finished product. Like if you have to create a random encounter on the fly, say your, your campaign that you're running takes an unanticipated left turn because your players do something that you didn't see coming and you suddenly have to create content to accommodate for that mm -hmm. you can make it up on the fly the way we all used to have to do yep. and the results will be you know whatever they happen to be based on your you know whether you had your Wheaties that morning yeah but if you can push a couple of buttons on an AI and generate a random encounter that fills in that gap why uh, why wouldn't you use it yeah right if it's if it produces good enough content why wouldn't you use it mm -hmm. I, I think I think for stuff like that and this is I don't know I am having a bit of a uh, existential crisis quanta uh, just kind of a quandary I'm wrestling with myself on where I draw the line on where I can use stuff like this because just like with mid, uh, the images, people were complaining, hey, it's our livelihood. Mm -hmm. Whereas, like, if I had posed the question, how do we know, or what what do we do if a gaming company writes a whole campaign with ChatGPT, mm -hmm. should I... Assuming they haven't already. Yeah. No. I, I would, I, I, I would, I like to think, well, I know I would feel bad personally 
thinking that like a robot could take over a couple of you know authors jobs away from them and how do you feel about owning a car that's been built after say 1978 I love having a car a modern vehicle that's ah, yes. more reliable and better built because robots did it instead of auto workers yes. right so yeah it's an, it's it's a question that's been around for mm -hmm. decades now it's come home to the gaming world mm -hmm. first in terms of artwork and now in terms of of creative generated text and i agree with your your sort of um, i don't know it seems like morally thin ice to as a former writer i mean i guess i'm still a writer as a person who formerly made their living as a writer for better part of no for 20 years it wasn't even the better part it was actually 20 years um it yeah it hits close to home to now think that a machine can simulate what i did mm -hmm. you know and is it as good as what i could do i'd like to you know i'd like to pat myself on the back and say no a machine can't do as well as i did yeah but it's close enough to what people at average people can do that it's maybe it's kind of hard to argue against its usage and and how do you tell a gaming company that might be right on the margins of viability in terms of economics right because the the, the economics of the gaming publishing world is not great mm -hmm. never has been it probably won't ever be so if a company can use this tool to create content with lower overhead costs that help it keep in business where it might not otherwise be. Where, where does the morality fall on yeah. there? Would you rather see a, a gaming company go out of business because they refuse to use the, all the tools that are available to them? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I, don't, I, 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 I feel like saying that is taking too hard a line. Even as a, as a professional writer, that asking somebody to to lose their business because they take a moral stance against using a tool like this that seems extreme to me but the, the flip side of it is this stuff grows geometrically like we talked about it's going to keep getting better and better mm -hmm. it's going to it's going to create an environment where the companies that refuse to use it will not be able to compete with the companies that do yeah and that may that's terrible to think about on some level but it's i think it's i think it's just how it's gonna be unfortunately you know um for the same reason that when you go to the movies the special effects are digital instead of practical mm -hmm. right they don't actually build you know crazy stunt sets and have stunt men do incredibly dangerous things for a lot of what you see on the screen now because it's orders of magnitude cheaper and safer to get those results fabricating them digitally right yeah. and some purists might say oh i would rather see some you know stuntman risk breaking his neck to do this fictitious stunt in a fictitious movie for my entertainment but you know if a company can say well we can make this movie for 30 million dollars less by using digital effects instead yeah and nobody dies i mean worst thing that happens is somebody in some lab and you know whatever country is being you know contracted with to do these special effects gets carpal tunnel it's like the worst thing that's gonna happen right so i don't know It's, I don't, I don't, I don't know. That I, this is why I'm, I'm just really struggling with mm -hmm. it. Like I, I didn't realize. Um, it wasn't until it hit so close to home that I'm realizing, like where, like, as we were talking earlier today, where I, I draw the line for what I consider okay. Because you made, you made a really great point that I'm wearing shoes right now that could have been made in Indonesia by a little boy 
you know, and that or it may have been been made by a robot, or maybe made by a robot, um, and then that kid didn't have to in, endure child labor because a robot did it. Yeah, you know, but maybe he didn't or child labor and I'm still wearing the shoes right and you know I I was talking to you how I I buy as much as I can fair trade stuff Mm -hmm. because I like to think I'm not putting money into the slave trade the modern day slave trade sure but maybe I'm just paying more for that maybe maybe I'm just being made a fool of in some situations. You're but buying a label that you hope is based in truth, but you don't know for sure if it is. Yeah. So, right. so, and, and I'm, I'm having now. I'm having this quandary, this moral quandary, because it's hitting so close to home. Because gaming is such a big hobby for me that to think that I might be enjoying something that somebody could have had a job making for me. Only to have a robot or an AI take that job away from them feels rough to me. Yes, and but I would also say it's not the AI that's taking their job. It's the person who's choosing to employ an AI instead of employing a yes. person. Yes, okay. There's, that, still that, a bi- there's still a human being making that yeah. decision, yeah, yeah, yeah. but that decision may be, may be driven by financial or logistical realities. I mean, let's face it, there's been a lot, a lot, a lot of gaming companies that have flat gone out of business, Mm -hmm. and everybody who worked for that company lost their job when that company went out of business because it wasn't economically viable. And one of the reasons that it wasn't economically viable is because people made decisions with their hearts and not their heads, right? But the flip side of that is gaming is all about heart. Mm -hmm. right nobody needs an rpg yeah right these are here for entertainment enjoyment the hobby yeah so it's a luxury so if it's a luxury does it really doesn't it make sense to pay what it pay what you need to pay in order to make it what you want it to be instead of the cold hard realities of the yeah you know the marketplace I wonder if an AI written campaign would have ever have that same heart and passion. Like, can you program a computer to have passion? Sure. Okay. Um. Look, I, I think I used this example when we we're talking about it. There was an argument a while back now about MP3s, digital music. Mm-hmm. And some people saying, well, you know, you could never simulate the pop and the crackle and the sound of a good, you know, vinyl record on an old school record, record player. And that was scientifically proven false, right? They did the taste test with somebody listening to both. Okay. And if you have, if you play the same song through the same sound system, the same speakers, the same technical means, right? The fact that some one song originates with vinyl and one is a digital recording of it, the human ear cannot distinguish between the two. In quality or quantity, you cannot tell once you get past a certain level of detail, right? Mm -hmm. And the human ability to comprehend language written word is the same way okay the ai can absolutely generate text that is proficient enough that it would be indistinguishable to most people most of the time at some point that will be true whether it may already be true in some cases it's never absolutes yes no but it will be more and more difficult to distinguish between human written and machine written material yeah and you just got to accept that that's the case because it is going to be the case they're going to be if if a gaming company decides that they're going to have an ai write their content you're not going to be able to tell you are not going to be able to tell and it's just i know morally that makes us go oh but it's the reality right yeah um the real question, I think, the more interesting question of this, is sort of the third facet of gaming AI, 
which is something that that I think you were saying Wizards is playing with, where they're creating or they're they're trying to develop an AI GM, mm. right? A dungeon master that yeah. is a computer. Now, that is an interesting question because there are so many human decisions that go into you know judgment calls that, uh-huh. that go into being a GM. That'll be the hardest thing for a machine to replicate authentically Mm -hmm. right it's not about the language it's not about the images it's not about creative content it's about human reactions yeah um i don't know where do you come down on that one because that's well see now that you you say it that way i'm i'm gonna uh be honest here sometimes as a gm i will cheat for the players um because like maybe it's a great night and like it's just like you miss the roll by one but we're having so much fun it's like oh that's what it, you need to hit and like i can read the room and i understand that like we're all excited for it yeah kill it kill it kill it it's like the new person they're excited will an ai be able to do that will an ai be able to like use the webcam and like understand that like no you know what i'm gonna change the how many hit points this guy has on the fly but books and movies have 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 played with this theme for long in science fiction for a long time machine empathy right like can a machine have empathy or can it simulate empathy authentically enough that it's functionally no different right because if a machine feels empathetic to the people using it or interacting with it, then it really doesn't matter whether it's real empathy or fake empathy. Mm-hmm. Right? It's it it has the same effect. So that's a that's a real question. Because what you're talking about is reading the room, feeling the feeling the vibe of the game, and making a judgment call, a very human judgment call, mm-hmm. for the sake of the feel of the game. Yeah, and will an AI ever have the ability to gauge the feel of something well enough to make those calls and make them the right way. And that's assuming that it is the right way, and and this is not me criticizing you, but a judgment call, a lot of times there is no right or wrong with it, right? You you choose to fudge a roll for the sake of the the group fun factor. Mm -hmm. Would it have been less fun if you didn't fudge it? Maybe. Maybe not. Maybe something else would have happened that yeah. would have heightened the drama and then the next role would have made it and it would have come out just, who knows? What ifs, right? Yeah. We don't know. But, like, would a would an AI ever be able to understand that a, ju- a judgment call like that is called for? Mm-hmm. Right? It's time to make one of those. What are you gonna do? That's I think that's longer. Yeah, I think I think it's possible. I think eventually it may happen. Mm-hmm. I think that's a lot. It's gonna be a lot more years until that effectively happens. Yeah. Um. So yeah, two pieces. Two pieces of gaming can be effectively simulated by an AI, but I think that third element is still a ways off. Yeah. Uh, you could easily right now have a computer tell you whether or not you hit the DC or not, but it's like really programming the machine to under like go with the ebb and flow of what's going on with the game. Right. Exactly. And but you I don't want to I don't want to make this video go too long, but you kind of yeah, a machine could have been ma- way more efficient with this. One. <laughs> you you made you gave me an existential crisis when we were talking about You're this. Welcome. Because <laughs> you were saying, like, with this machine learning, like, it can learn how to press our buttons in a certain way, yeah. too. And, and then and then it can socially engineer situations in your life. That That is my biggest concern about the GM aspect of... Oh, not my biggest concern. It is a concern that I have about 
putting a machine in charge of making judgment calls in the in the form of being a, a game master, right? Is the why would a company do that? Ask yourself why why would a company like Wizards or anybody else engage in that exercise? Number mm -hmm. one, if they can charge money for the service, that's yeah. the most obvious way, right? Um, you have you rent a computer GM for you know twenty dollars a session or whatever it is, and they get to keep that money. Yeah. Um, so that that's a straightforward transaction. The more insidious thing is that in order to make their technology work better, it's going to be machine learning, right? Mm -hmm. It's as it performs the duties of a GM, it's going to be studying and refining the art of being a GM such that the next game it runs is going to be a little better than the last game it runs. That's inevitable. That's the nature of computers and certainly of AI is learning. Can you really trust any company not to use that learning mm -hmm. of human and being able to control human behavior patterns to a certain degree because that's what a GM does in a game? or respond to them. Yeah. Like, they're going to not just be learning how to be a GM. They're going to be learning what makes players tick. Mm -hmm. They're going to be learning when, how, and why the players make the decisions that they do. That is invaluable information to any company. Mm -hmm. They can use it for marketing purposes. They can use it for all kinds of things, right? Yeah. And that's way more than your personal info may be sold to yeah. XYZ company. They're basically selling your brain waves, how you think, mm -hmm. in a the more direct way than what your click history on the internet is, right? So that should be an eye opener to people, and they should really be thinking about that because if you start interacting with an AI, you're teaching that AI how to read you, yeah. and whoever is running that AI, whoever paid for that AI whoever owns the rights to the information is going to choose what they do with the information they learn about you. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's where it starts to get really morally murky. Like, e are you sure? Luckily, I have a lot of friends who are willing to be in-person DMs. Yes, that is <laughs> true. But it, that's not true for everybody. But that's not true for everybody. It's much more true for you than for me, for example. Right? I am in relatively few in-person games these days. Mm -hmm. And it's it's troubles me. But it, you know, I'm sad that I'm not playing more often and and in more games than I am. But I also that doesn't make me want to run out and hug a computer and yeah. say, hey, be my GM for me. I'm not there yet. Maybe I'm just too old and cranky. But Future is now, old man. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Get off my lawn. Um, but you know what? It, it's it's in it's inevitable that it's going to go that way, right? There's a whole generation of people coming up who have never known a world without direct computer interface in the palm yeah. of their hand and on their desktop and whatever else, and they are completely comfortable with our benevolent robot overlords because of that or they are more comfortable with our robot overlays than that because of that. And it will be harder and harder to convince somebody of that generation to be skeptical of a machine doing a person's job. Yeah. Because they were raised on machines. Um, I don't know. What do you guys think? <laughs> and on that happy note, no, look, look, the tools, they're tools, right? Yeah. And up to a point, the tools are as good or as bad as we use them. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I really, <laughs> I think it's kind of a waste of time to argue against the selective usage of AI for art or for text generation, because I think there is a time and a place for both of those things to be used and mm -hmm. used effectively and used ethically. Yeah. But it, as always, it's the people choosing when and how to use those things that are ultimately going to decide what design whether or not it's ethical or not.
Mm-hmm. So, but no robot GMs, man. I draw the line. That's my line. I think that might be my line too. Now we were. We went into this thinking we would disagree, and here we are now agreeing. Well, no, well, I'm I'm only now disagreeing just because of the whole <laughs> sharing my brain, <laughs> my my brain waves of big pharma, <laughs> big data. At first, that's, I thought that. At first, I thought it was new a new one to be afraid big of. Big data. It used to be big oil, then it was big pharma, now it's big data. Uh, thank you guys very much for watching. Uh, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and that like button if you are so willing. Yes, um, please. Uh, we promise we are not AIs and we won't sell your brainwaves to anybody. So let us know what you think. All right, am I just a paranoid old crank? Uh, should we embrace our robot overlords and, and all that? Yes. Tell us what you think, guys. We should. Thank you all very much for watching. Yes, uh, resistance is futile. All right, thanks, guys. Uh, and as always, game, game on. on. I'm not a robot. No. No, you're not. <laughs> At least not a very good one. <laughs>